Welcome to Live on Purpose Radio with Dr. Paul Jenkins, where you will hear inspiring stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Feed your mind with a regular dose of positive energy and show up for your life every day on purpose. Living on purpose means that you have a purpose and you do it intentionally. And now, here's your host, Dr. Paul. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Live on Purpose Radio. We're living on purpose today, promoting pathological positivity. I've got a good friend with me here in office, in studio, Dr. E.J. Raven. Say hello, E.J. Hello. Good to be here. Thanks, Paul. You are one of the few returning guests at wow. Live on Purpose Radio. How does, that make you feel? How does that make you feel? Pretty big deal. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, thank you. We were having a chat just before the show. We're going to jump right into that. Because you're onto some things that are very similar to the things that I'm onto, but we're coming from different perspectives. I'm a psychologist, and you are a physician, a chiropractic physician with a practice in Park City, Utah. But we're onto some of the same things. Correct. You were mentioning something, Dr. Raven, about how important a positive attitude is to health, health care. Correct. And wellness. It's, it's interesting to see, as I get to work with clients day in and day out, how much a, an absolute impact um, that belief system and that, that focus has. That uh, sometimes positive attitude, I don't know, it's kind of like the word exercise. It gets used so much uh-huh. that it's almost like, oh, not another one of these. and not you know. But this isn't go, 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 I can do it, and you know, listen to some Rocky music and go, go hit it. It's, it's more of where do you spend your energy? Do you, mm. Where do you focus? Um, we all have health concerns, health challenges. We all have problems that show up in life. Mm-hmm. And it seems like we have two options. We focus on what we want or what we don't want. Right. And it's very easy in healthcare, especially, to end up focusing on something we don't want. There's such a spin towards, and we're actually kind of programmed through TV and through right. this and that, that we've given a lot of our power away, Paul. We're giving our, you know, our ability to stay in the driver's seat and make choices mm-hmm. and you know, be an influencer in our own, our own experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's, that's the thing, is when we choose positive and we say, no, 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 I've got options. And rather than focus on what I don't want, I'm going to redirect that energy and spend that energy when I do want. And I think there's right. so much power in that. So a comment, first off, about attitude. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my guests was Mike Schlappy. I don't know if you know Mike. Name's familiar. He was shot in the chest at the age of 14. It left wow. him paralyzed. So paraplegic okay. in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. And he's also a speaker. He does a lot of uh, presenting and speaking and training. And uh, Mike talks about attitude. Now, how many guys in wheelchairs are out there talking about attitude? So Mike wanted to have a unique spin on this thing. And when I was talking to Mike about attitude, he said, a lot of people don't understand what it is. Mm -hmm. He was encouraged by his editor, who's also working on my book, Thomas Cantrell, who said, go talk to an airline pilot. And Mike's like, what? Okay, my neighbor's an airplane pilot. Uh So he he went and talked to his, his pilot neighbor. He said, what is the most important instrument in the cockpit? And this pilot told him, it's the attitude indicator. No question about it. Didn't say altitude. Mm -hmm. He said attitude. So in aviation, the attitude of an airplane is its position relative to the horizon or to the earth. So can you see that a nose-down attitude is going to take you right into the hard stuff? Oh, yeah. A nose-up attitude is going to create some elevation. So the attitude is the position relative to the earth. Now, if we look at it that way, a positive attitude is is taking a positive position, which, as you said, changes your energy. No question, your vibration. It's not just an energy like the fluffy, wow, this is great. Right. This is the actual physiology. Our body physiology, how our heart beats, how our digestive system works, how our body functions 
is driven by our thoughts. Absolutely. Thoughts are things, and they change us. And if, if you don't believe this, you know, you're driving down the road, and the little red and blue lights behind you come on. Mm-hmm. What happens to your physiology? You have a physiological reaction Correct. to that. Your, your anatomy changes. Your body changes. And That's so right. If we believe we can go through life with this nose-down attitude, using the plain analogy, mm-hmm. um, and, and again, it's so easy. Nose down is the way that we're taught. Nose down is the way that we're encouraged. Mm-hmm. Nose down is the way healthcare is delivered in vast majority of instances. Because yeah. it's, well, I'm sorry to tell you, but this is your, you know what I mean? And the prognosis, I, I really dislike prognosis. Mm. It, even if you've got a white coat on, if you can't move mountains, I don't want you to give me a prognosis. If you're, if you're not the big man <laughs> himself. B- because yeah. really that's kind of a... Uh, well, it's an opinion, opinion. anyway. Opinion, yes, and, and and it's based on on some guesswork and some numbers. But, sure, but I don't want you to d- t- tell me what it means. I want to interpret what it means for myself. I, I want to make sure. the choice myself, and I want to spend the energy focused on what's possible mm-hmm. instead of you know what's maybe probable or what's you know what I mean. The statistics state that this could be the case. Right. What does that have to do with anything? You know, I, I want mm-hmm. to spend my energy that I have moving towards a goal and the desired outcome I want. Right. Um, and it takes effort. Well, statistics. Okay, so the average temperature here in Orem, Utah is 70 degrees. Okay. So how warm is it today? It's not too warm and it's <laughs> rainy. <laughs> well, today, yeah. But the average temperature doesn't tell you anything about right here, right now. Correct. So that's what I'm hearing you saying. The numbers may mean something, but be careful about how you interpret those and then choose your position, which affects your, your energy. So can you give us some examples of how this works physiologically, what you've seen with, with some of your patients or people that you've consulted with about this? Sure, and, and I think we've all seen it. Sometimes we just haven't put our, you know, our finger on our thumb on it. But mm. uh, you have friends who, you know, every time someone's coughing around, I'm like, oh, great, Here now, it comes. now I'm going to get sick. Great. I can just, I can already almost feel it. My throat's already starting to itch. And literally, that belief system, I, I think, drives reality. We, we, it's not what is, it's what we believe is. It's, it's not what mm-hmm. happens to us, it's what we believe, how we interpret it. So are you saying that that belief, that, that pattern of thinking, that attitude, actually creates that outcome? Or creates a higher possibility that that outcome will happen. So a, a little kind of airplane analogy that I experienced firsthand. Okay. Um, my wife and I went on a little trip. We uh, nearly missed the plane leaving <laughs> <laughs> and returning. Um, somehow in my geniusness, I, I looked at the uh, arrival time and departure time. Got them a little bit confused. Got them a little mixed up. A little up. mixed up. A little Dane brand. And we're, we're driving back to the airport to drop the rail car off, and I'm like, we have like a half hour to be on this plane and we still got to drop the car, get a bus to the, and get to the terminal and get to the, you know what I mean? Yeah. And right there we had a choice. It was completely improbable that we would make it one. Um, statistically, it was very slim that we would make it. It was, it just didn't make any sense. We had a half hour. It doesn't add up. And we needed an hour. Um, but we said, let's go for it. What do we have to lose? There wasn't another flight that day. I needed to be back to work the next morning. We were mm. out of luck. So he said, let's go for it. So we went for it. And we were literally running through the airport, dragging luggage, running through the airport. I mean, mm-hmm. as fast as I could. I'm like, I'll try and catch the plane. Um, and guess what? We made it. If yeah. we had said, ah, not going to happen, guess what wouldn't have happened? That's right. And in a very practical way, that would have changed your behavior. Correct. Correct. It would have changed my experience. It would have changed what happened. And so in healthcare. Say it's something, you know, I'm a chiropractor. I deal a lot with people in pain. They come in with a neck pain or a back pain or, you know, mm-hmm. an ache. Mm-hmm. And that kind of drives them to action or brings them to, you know, do something. Yeah. And if I have this belief that, you know, it's really unfortunate. I caught the neck bug, doc. I need you to fix me. And you know what I mean? And that's an easy position to hold because we're kind of brought up in a belief system like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's kind of almost like I'm a victim. It, it's, yeah. it's like... I'm not an agent. I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? I don't have anything to do with this. Not any part of it. It's just bad luck. Really bad it's luck. It's happening Doug. to me. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and I don't have any choice there. I don't have any power. I don't have any ability. If, if I could spin it a little bit, and I still have the problem. I still have the neck pain, let's say. Sure. But I recognize, you know what? 
something must be must be off. There must be something out of balance. Mm. And I wonder why my body would would try and get me to do something different. Because pain motivates me. Pain drives me. Mm-hmm. I wonder what's going on. And just that little tiny shift from son of a gun, I can't believe I've got such bad luck, to I wonder why and I wonder what I could do is huge because one opens doors and one closes doors. One says, mm-hmm. sorry, buddy. And one says, interesting. And, and we have ability to start to do different and think different. Be, because right. we've all heard the saying a million times that if we do what we've done, we get what we've we got. We get what we've got. But we don't realize that that applies, that's a principle. Yeah, it's always on. That's right. Unfortunately, like gravity. <laughs> that's right. Unfortunately, there's no around, way around it. Yeah. And, and, and so if I have this pain and I don't change my lifestyle, I don't change my behavior, I don't change my belief system, mm-hmm. um, am I going to get to the root? Am I going to deal with the, the, the cause and move forward? Or am I always going to be putting another level of Band-Aid or duct tape or you know, some sort of hmm. quick fix on it? So is there an attitude possible, a position toward pain that's different from the traditional pain is bad kind of an idea? Very interesting, and I, I didn't know our discussion would take this direction, but hmm. one of my mentors once said in an interview, he was asked, if you could fix people's pain, would you do it? And his answer was, no. And, and you know, interesting. Of, course, of course, this was, well, why would you not fix people's pain? He said, if I fix their pain and they don't change anything, I've done them a disservice. They have to take another uh, loop right. on the track of life and get back to the same spot where they can have enough motivation, which is typically pain, mm-hmm. to do something. And, and so when people come into the office, my goal is not to make their pain go away. I tell people, my neck feels great. I'm sorry yours hurts. It's really not my problem. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> well, great, Doc. You know, I care about you and I'm interested <laughs> in you, but a lack of me is not your problem. And there's something your body's trying to, trying to get you to do. And you can leave your hand on the hot stove and, you know, do lots of Mm -hmm. techniques and lots of cover-ups and lots of different approaches. But until you get your hand off the heat, the pain will be there. So it's more of an indicator. Correct. More of a warning light. Yeah. A a little heads up, something's not quite right. Well, just like in the airplane, and we keep going back to these aviation Mm -hmm. analogies, but in the airplane, if you get off course, the navigation feedback system will let you know that. Give you a beep or a warning light. Yeah, you're or one degree off mm-hmm. or whatever. Now, if you're one degree off for 3,000 miles, you're going to be 500 miles off by the time. I don't know if I did the trigonometry correctly. But so, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're off just a little bit, but for a long time, you're going to be way off. And, and that's my feeling in health mm. um, and maybe life that people are. Well, aren't, it's a principle. It's darn principles. There you They're go. Pain in the neck. But it's, it's not that we're broken. 98% of us, 99% of us is fantastic. We got one or two scraggly mm. percents or percentile that are holding us up, that are, that are causing us to drift off a little bit. We're almost right on. Mm-hmm. And so even when people feel like they're facing these huge chasms of, of just crazy and they've got all these problems and things are really, if we step back, the vast majority of them still on target and the vast majority of them still just fine. Yeah. We're designed for success. That's right. It's who we are. And we do it without even thinking about it. That's right. The vast majority of the time. That's right. So these little pain indicators, these warning lights, we can use those for something if we change our position. That's right. We'll be right back. Live in a nice big house with sunny little pool and I'll be cool. I'll always have a gig, I'll be big. I'll have parties and friends from places to go. The only problem is- this is Kirk Weasler to tell you about morebetterbooks.com. Morebetterbooks.com is where you can find more better books for a more better life. Not only that, let me tell you about some of the very fun and cool select titles on morebetterbooks.com. You'll want to get a copy of The Dog Poop Initiative. This best smelling book could change your life 
forever. It's certainly changed the lives of thousands of Boeing employees, as well as school teachers, parents, leaders across the United States and in Israel and in Germany. And you can get your own copy at morebetterbooks.com. Whoa, that's not all. What about The Cookie Thief? This classic tale told in a rhyming format, fully illustrated with very fun hit messages. Pick up a copy now today on morebetterbooks.com. Other great titles there, Finding Your Pathway to Mastery, Beyond Illusions, Make It Great. These titles are only available on morebetterbooks.com. Go to morebetterbooks.com today and begin to have a more better life and live that life on purpose. Thank you for listening to Live On Purpose Radio. We're so glad to have you here. Please come by the website, drpauljenkins.com, spelled with a D-R, drpauljenkins.com. On the website, you'll have an opportunity to receive a free download. And while you're there, make sure you click on the social media icons. Come over to Facebook, where we will be posting these episodes as well as our YouTube videos and other content and announcements for you to share. Please like us, comment, subscribe, join the conversation. We're happy to have you with us here at Live On Purpose Radio. Let's all support each other to live on purpose. DrPaulJenkins.com To be what we are and to become what we are capable of becoming is the only end of life. Robert Louis Stevenson Positivity in health. This has got me fired up, EJ. Okay. This, because I talk about positivity all of the time. That's my thing. I do that with my clients. I do it on the platform. I do it on my shows. And don't always tie it right into physical health, how you actually feel. And this is something that to a lot of people just feels like they have no control over. It just is what it is. I can't control that. Correct. And even, I, I think there's a, another level of not only can I control it, mm. but there's some divine, you know, this is my cross to bear, and, and this is, you know, this yeah. is just who I am. This is the way it's meant to be, that I don't really have a lot of ability to, to influence this. Mm-hmm. It's just my luck or my, my, you know what I mean, my lot in life. I, I just thought of an example. Uh, Last week, my wife and I, for date night, did a 5K. We ran a 5K. Now, EJ, we've got 96 years between us. I can remember specifically hearing my wife say, less than five years ago, I will never run. We ran a 5K. And afterwards, we went out for treats, not to the emergency room. (laughs) You know what I mean? Uh Uh-huh. Now, I didn't come in first. I didn't come in last. But I have a friend. Her name's Jenny Roper. Some of you know her. She's going to be on the show. She came in last. Not in this 5K, but in an earlier one. Mm -hmm. Dead last. Now, did did she do okay or not? Again, I guess, where did she come from? Exactly. What's her position? What's her attitude? Okay, now the part I didn't tell you is that Jenny has cerebral palsy. Her body does things differently than and mine does. Okay, and she had told herself forever, I, I don't run, I can't run. Well, is that true? Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not. She not only entered, but finished a 5K. Wonderful. How amazing is that? And then that becomes inspiring because of a position, because of an attitude that she took. She got her body to go do something that she didn't think she could do. You know, uh, as we discuss this, it makes me think in my life, how many 5Ks can I not run? How, yeah. how many absolutes have I set up? that? Oh, that that's and you not know good. you're right, too. Correct. I proved it. I've got great stories. Oh, I've got stories in my head that are so good about how this is and 
why it is. And I can, I got great, great stories yeah. about why I'm right, why it's impossible. Right. It can't be done. Humanly impossible. Break the, what was it, five minute mile? Four minute. Four minute, sorry. Humanly impossible. Yeah, Roger Bannister didn't believe that. Yeah, he was, he, unfortunately, he, he didn't hear that. <laughs> He's <right>? a heretic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the current world record for the mile, Hikam El Garouge of Morocco. How he fast? Ran, he ran it 17 seconds faster than Roger Bannister. Hmm. 343. It's impossible to beat that. It'll never be beaten. My buddy Brad Barton, <laughs> I showed you his book just uh-huh. before the show, earlier this year set the new world record for the Masters mile. Wow. That's old guys like me. <laughs> okay, 45 plus, 416. Wow. Can... Or can't. No. Well, one turns the brain on, one turns it off. Correct. You see that? I can't. What's the next step after that? Nothing next. You'd move on to something else because you can't, you can't be done. You got nowhere to go after That's right. that. That's right. You have to shift gears. I can get some things rolling in your mind. It, it turns on the energy switch. While we're talking about energy, let's get some flowing toward a positive direction. I can invite you to start looking at how can I. Exactly. I mentioned opening, closing doors. I can mm-hmm. begins to open a door. And it's not this, I know I can do this. I, I don't think we start out that way very often. At least I don't. Mm. Um, I start out with, hmm, I, wa- I wonder if it could be done. And if it could be done, what would it look like? And mm-hmm. is, it even, is it even a slim, remote, you know, sliver of, of possibility? And it doesn't have to be, I can mm-hmm. see how it's going to happen, I know it's going to work, and I can, you know, work through this. Right. I think it can start out with just that, well, why not leave that option on the table? Rather than eliminate it altogether, why not leave the possibility that maybe I don't have all the information, maybe I have misinformation, maybe I have misinterpreted the information, and maybe there's a possibility that exists that I, I'm not even aware of mm-hmm. at this point. So if the doctor tells you mm-hmm. that you've got a 5% chance of survival from this diagnosis that you just had. I'd say, Doc, you're wrong. I'm terminal. <laughs> from the day I was born, I'm terminal. There's no way of getting out of this place alive. I, I felt it from, from the get-go. I knew I was a goner. There is an expiration date yeah, on this one. I'm, I'm a goner, Doc. Yep. Kiss it goodbye. Sorry, you're terribly wrong. Mm-hmm. But I would question him on the timing. Yeah, because yeah. who knows? Correct. And, and, you know, if Doc, see that, see that mountain you move that? I'm all over your 5%. But if you can't move that mountain, if, you can't, if you're not the big man himself... I'm one of the five. That's right. That's right. <laughs> And why not? Why couldn't Why it not you? That's right. And, and all you need is maybe just leave the darn door cracked open. It doesn't have right. to be this wide open, huge, we're going to roll this semi through. <laughs> it can be a sliver and just allow that to exist. In, in, uh, in my life, a lot of times goals I've set and reached weren't very, weren't very the possibility of reaching them weren't great. Does right. that make sense? It wasn't like I had a path and I could see the way and I knew it was going to happen. It's more like I set a goal or an intention or I'm going to, mm-hmm. whatever that is, and then I just let it sit, let it be. And every time that option came around, I just kind of let it hang out there and just mm-hmm. kept, kept it alive, fanned that flame just or that fire just a little bit. Right. And it's amazing when you leave those possibilities open, when you... Take information from healthcare providers and recognize this is their opinion mm-hmm. and it has value. Absolutely. But it's not the facts. It's opinion. It's not absolute. And who you are today, and that's what these tests are based on, is who you are today, mm-hmm. is not who you're going to be tomorrow if you change. If you do something different, I cannot predict. And you predict. will change. That's right. I cannot predict your future. If you stay the course, it will look like this. If you mm-hmm. introduce something new and different, I have no idea where you'll end up. You change direction, you got a different destination ahead of you. That's right. And if it works in one aspect of our life, if it's a principle, unfortunately, it probably could work in others, or fortunately. You know, sometimes we almost don't want to believe. Sometimes we it, almost that's don't interesting, want to. isn't it? We might resist that because it puts the responsibility right back in my hands. I know, and that's the worst place to be. It's so much more fun being, being the victim. Mm-hmm. 
I love it when it's my wife's fault. Oh, my crying. If you were married to my <laughs> wife, you would understand what I'm talking Then you'd know. You would know. Right. I love it when it's the doctor's, you know what I mean, fault, or this is fault. Then you can tell that victim story and everybody and says, oh. The best part is I don't have to change. I got a reason why it's oh, not you, possible. It wouldn't do any good to change anyone. Anyway. Not when you're like me. There's nothing you can do. No. Genetically, it's who I am. It's my... Oh, listen to how sickening this sounds. <laughs> We're we're joking about this, but people talk this way. Well, and unfortunately, our beautiful healthcare system has some ugly. And part of that ugly is a belief that we are victims too. Mm-hmm. Um, very interesting. This is another side note, but I hope you're okay with this. Mm-hmm. But, but the, the idea that genetics drives us is called the central dogma. Um, very interesting. The scientific idea. The central dogma. That's, Google it. Central yeah, dogma. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. But that's being disproved. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of something called epigenetics. Mm. But the epi means on top of. The epigenetic is the on-off switch on top of our genes. And even though we may inherit a negative genetic potential, our lifestyle, our belief system, our, what we're exposed to, how we live our lives is the determining factor. So identical twins, same genes, exact mm-hmm. same genetic makeup. One has diabetes, the other doesn't. One has heart disease, the other doesn't. One has... Interesting. Isn't that interesting? So... Yeah. Well, it's that classic nature-nurture thing. Is it, you know, are we born with this or do we develop it and learn it over time? Well, the answer is probably yes. Correct. Uh, All of that is relevant and comes into play. But what I'm hearing from you today is that there is a power in our position in our attitude. You've talked about possibilities and probabilities. And I think we make our possibilities more probable if we put ourselves into that positive position. If we don't, if we're not in charge, if we're not firmly planted in the driver's seat, who's, who's driving the bus? Right. Who, whose life is it? Mm-hmm. Who, who, you know, and, and I think that's so important is Again, if what we're doing isn't working. So you may or may not be able to miraculously turn around some diagnosis or health condition. I promise we're all terminal. We all will check out of here. So that's your prognosis for us. Absolutely. But can can we not live until we go? Yeah. And how are we going to live for whatever time we have? Well, and I, I think that's where that positive... That's where that power of choice comes in. Mm-hmm. And, and again, there's hard things that I've never faced. I hope I don't have to. I hope I don't get to. Mm-hmm. Um, but each of us just decide. Um, I really love, I, I believe it's Eleanor Roosevelt. She says that she's, decide, or she's found out that people are just about as happy as they make up their minds to be in this life. Mm-hmm. And, and I think maybe that could be they're just about as healthy as they make up their minds to be. Or mm-hmm. just about as capable of running a 5K as they mm-hmm. make up their minds to be, or as capable of overcoming their diabetes, their obesity, their hypoglycemia, their whatever word Chronic we pain. Correct. That it may not be perfect, but why wouldn't we choose mm-hmm. the better? Why wouldn't we focus on what we want instead of what we don't want? And in the meantime, seeing the good in what we have. Oh, I think that's a, a great glitch I have is, is a tendency to not recognize, again, that there's so much fantastic. Well, you can always imagine it to be better. And sometimes that has us beating ourselves up for where we are. And I, I a thousand percent agree with this and experience this. I spend so much energy on what's on the, what's on the other side. And, and I think mm-hmm. we, we, we may want to sit down, regroup, and say, all right, yeah. what, where do I want to spend this energy, this precious you know, gift of energy that I have? Mm-hmm. And it is a choice, isn't it? Yeah, again, unfortunately it is. <laughs> unfortunately, but the bad news is also the good news. Correct. It's just like seeing your own hands on that steering wheel. That's right. Uh, what can you do now? Well, steer it. That's right. <laughs> Take it somewhere. If you don't like the direction you're going, turn the darn wheel. Course corrections. Course correction. I have a f- friend who says it this way: course corrections, so that you don't have to do forced corrections. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. So that choice of uh, how you're going to look at it and how you choose to interpret whatever data comes in, whether that's opinions from professionals or 
or something in the tabloids. Uh, They're all opinions. And take them for what they're worth, but then choose to do something productive. And that can affect not only your health, which is a whole new spin for me today, um, but also any aspect of your life where, where principles apply. And I can't think of anywhere they don't. Correct. I, I just, I love the power we possess mm-hmm. to choose. And, and again, if I find myself in a spot that's not working, um, either I'm going to repeat or I'm going to choose differently. Yeah. And why not? That's right. Give it a whirl. Give it a whirl. Turn on that positive energy. Turn on a life that you love. Dr. E.J. Raven, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you, Dr. Paul. Everybody go out there and live on purpose.